The asteroid which killed nearly all of the dinosaurs struck Earth during springtime. This conclusion was drawn by an international team of researchers after having examined thin sections, high-resolution synchrotron X-ray scans, and carbon isotope records of the bones of fishes that died less than 60 minutes after the asteroid impacted. The team, led by researchers from Uppsala University in Sweden, presented its findings in the scientific journal Nature. The researchers turned to the unique Tanis locality in North Dakota in the United States to find fossilized paddlefishes and sturgeons, which were direct casualties of the meteorite impact that also marked the last day of the dinosaurs. The impact rocked the continental plate and caused massive standing waves in water bodies. These mobilized enormous volumes of sediment that engulfed fishes and buried them alive while impact spherules rained down from the sky, less than an hour after impact. Fossil fishes in the Tanis event deposit were pristinely preserved, with their bones showing almost no signs of geochemical alteration. The synchrotron X-ray data, which are made available for anyone to explore, confirms that filtered-out impact spherules are still stuck in their gills. Even soft tissues have been preserved. Selected fish bones were studied for the reconstruction of latest Cretaceous seasonality. These bones registered seasonal growth very much like trees do, says Sophie Sanchez, of Uppsala University. The retrieved growth rings not only captured the life histories of the fishes, but also recorded the season in which the catastrophic extinction occurred. One of the studied paddlefishes was subjected to stable carbon isotope analysis to reveal its annual feeding pattern. The availability of zooplankton, its prey of choice, oscillated seasonally and peaked between spring and summer. The temporary increase of ingested zooplankton enriched the skeleton of its predator with the heavier C13 carbon isotope relative to the lighter C12 isotope. This confirms that the feeding season had not yet climaxed. Death came in spring, says Melanie During, from Uppsala University, lead author of the publication. The end Cretaceous mass extinction represents one of the most selective extinctions in the history of life that saw the demise of all non-avian dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and most marine reptiles. Mammals, birds, crocodiles, and turtles survived. Because the extinction started during Northern Hemisphere spring, it took place during particularly sensitive life stages of latest Cretaceous organisms, including the onset of reproduction cycles. And because Southern Hemisphere autumn coincides with spring in the Northern Hemisphere, the preparation for winter may have just protected organisms in the Southern Hemisphere. This crucial finding can explain why most of the dinosaurs died out. While birds and early mammals managed to evade extinction, concludes Melanie During. Thank you for watching. Aisha Sinclair for the Neutronium Alchemist. And please, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah.